Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 13th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Xavier came across a pretty neat little trick to entice users to click on malicious files. Now, in this case, it all starts out as usual with an email message, but the attachment in this case is actually not the malicious file itself, but just a shortcut that then points to the malicious file via an SMB file share. And because it is also possible to customize the icon that's displayed in Finder for this particular shortcut, the attacker is selecting the shared folder icon, which also looks fairly benign and common enough to have users click on it because they really think they're only opening that directory while instead they're actually downloading and executing the file. And Citizen Lab has a great story about how Turkey and Egypt are redirecting specific users to malware. Apparently, deep packet inspection equipment being made by Sandvine is used in order to accomplish this. And if an affected user is visiting via HTTP, not HTTPS, specific download links, like for example, for Avast Antivirus, download.com or 7 SIP, they're then transparently being redirected to download spyware. The spyware being downloaded here has been associated with nation state activity in the past and is typically used to monitor the internet activity of dissidents. Citizens Lab uh, also took a closer look at where the malware is hosted and for the most part, for example, the Turkish malware was only accessible from Turkey itself, not from outside Turkey. And only very specific IP addresses were redirected to these malicious files. The Sandvine boxes were identified based on some TCP IP oddities that are commonly associated with them, like very specific IP IDs and the use of no IP flags, which is kind of unusual because most modern operating systems are setting the do not fragment flag in order to do path MTU discovery. Now in Egypt, this technology was apparently not exclusively used for censorship and surveillance, but also to inject simple ads and crypto coin mining scripts into users browser sessions. Now to protect yourself, HTTPS is probably at this point the simplest and best method. Of course, you could use a VPN that is terminated in a different country that may help you as long as the country that VPN is terminated in doesn't deploy similar tricks. Now, even with HTTPS, it would theoretically be possible to intercept connections like this and then inject bad traffic as long as the operator of the device has access to a trusted certificate authority. Many countries do have access like this. So in particular, if you suspect a nation state interference, then HTTPS in particular without certificate pinning is unlikely going to protect you. And some of the recent APIs being added to JavaScript had uh, some significant but often underappreciated and underreported privacy issues. Uh, one API, for example, allows the browser to access the ambient light sensor in your laptop or mobile device. Typically, Laptops use this uh, to dim the display in dark rooms to save power. It's similar for mobile devices, but uh, this can also be used to, for example, detect and map objects in the room that cast shadows onto the device. Well, starting with version 60, Firefox will add a configuration setting to allow users to disable access to these sensors. The standard for these APIs does not require any specific user permission in order to enable these like uh, we for example have for the GPS sensor. Instead uh, these sensors are supposed to be accessible by JavaScript all the time. With version 60 of Firefox uh, the sensors or these APIs uh, will be turned off by default. The user will be able to enable them using configuration settings. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.